Let's get you down to Florida, to Miami, where Vivek Ramaswamy, who is a candidate for the uh, presidency for the GOP primary, is having a press conference, I believe. Let's dip in here. Listen to him. That says that the president has an authority to decide what is and is not covered. It stays silent on the statements that Trump made in 2016 after the election, despite the fact that it quotes him before that election. It stays silent on the fact that executive orders do not bind a U.S. president as law. That tells me this is politicized. And by the way, I want to be very clear about something. As U.S. president, I would have made different judgments than Donald Trump made. Thank you. How do you do it? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Good. So I'll, I'll be fine without this. Yeah. 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 I'll be fine without it. Thank you. So the bottom line is there are two things that matter. One is how are we going to hold the Biden Department of Justice accountable? The first answer is that yesterday I submitted a Freedom of Information Act request a demand to the Biden Department of Justice demanding what did Biden tell Jack Smith? What did Biden tell Merrick Garland? What did Merrick Garland tell special prosecutor Jack Smith? They are required within 20 business days to give us an answer about any direct or indirect communications. And the first announcement I want to make today is that if they do not comply with the law in the next 20 business days, then we will sue them in federal courts at our campaign's expense to get to the bottom of those answers. The news media should be doing this. It is a shame that a competitor to Donald Trump in this election has to do the job of the political news media. Your job, if you have one, is to hold the U.S. government accountable for their lies. You do not take what they say at face value for the last eight years when it was President Trump, do not take their lies at face value now. But it is a shame that it takes a leader outside of the media to stand up. That is what we're doing. They now have this Freedom of Information Act request, and if they don't comply within 20 days and they don't follow the law, we will see to it in federal court that they do. That brings me to my second announcement that I'm going to make today. This is an announcement of a letter that my campaign has sent to every other campaign in this race, to Mike Pence, to Nikki Haley, to Larry Elder, to RFK Jr., to Marianne Williamson, to Doug Bugram, Burgum, to Perry Johnson, to Chris Christie, to Ron DeSantis, the governor of the state where we are today, who by any measure is not here today in his own state, I will tell you that we have sent this letter, and I'm happy to announce, this is my commitment on January 20th, 2025, if I'm elected the next U.S. president, to pardon Donald J. Trump for these offenses in this federal case. And I have challenged, I have demanded that every other candidate in this race either sign this commitment to pardon on January 20th, 2025, or else to explain why they are not. And I will tell you something. It's going to be difficult for those other candidates to sign this letter. The reason it's going to be difficult for them is the same reason it's difficult for me. The donor class has been calling every Republican candidate and telling us to stay away from this not to touch it from a 10-foot pole, not to just keep your distance away for Trump. That is what the donor class is telling us. That's what they're telling the other candidates. I refuse to abide by being a disciple of the donor class. I think that we need to declare independence from our donor class in the Republican Party. That is why I challenge every one of the other candidates to actually act on their convictions. If you're not going to president, pardon President Trump on January 20, 2025, you deserve to say why, and we will hold you accountable, just as we're holding the Biden administration accountable. 
That's what we need more of in this country. Honesty, integrity, and actual purpose for our country in a way that puts America first, not our political interests first. And I'll close with saying this before I take questions. It would be a lot easier for me as a Republican candidate in this race if Donald Trump were not in it. But I don't want to win this election, unlike others, by eliminating our competition, by a federal administrative police state arresting my opponents. I want to do it the way that our founding fathers believed we should have, starting in 1776. That it is the people of this country, where every person's voice and vote counts equally, that is how we decide who governs this country, not by a federal administrative police state. And I challenge the Biden administration with this FOIA request. I challenge my fellow contenders in this race with this commitment letter to say that we will pardon Trump on January 20th, 2025. And nobody, either Biden or the other contenders in this race, are going to be able to hide from that truth. I thank you all. We're going to open this up to some questions. Thank you. Okay, hard for us to hear the questions. Uh, we certainly could hear the answers. Yes. <laughs> and there seems to be quite a crowd down there in Miami yeah. gathered already, and we're still four and a half hours away from the appearance of former president before that federal judge. Yep, so he got there, and the, mm -hmm. the big takeaway is he's basically asking and challenging all of the other candidates in the race to sign this letter that would ask the Justice Department to respond to a FOIA, which is a Freedom of Information request. Um, FOIAs are very interesting. They can take years to be responded to because people know how to deal with it. But the Biden administration has a communications challenge on their hand indeed. And so this uh, arraignment's happening at 3 o'clock p.m. today. That's right. So we'll be here for you all day long as that action in Miami gets going. Let's